My brother. It's been a long time coming, man. Yeah. It's 2024, November, <sighs> and you're about to go to the Navy. Three days. In three days. More like two, but yeah. How does it feel, man? Very surreal. I feel like the accumulation of everything that's happened within the last three years has been like, my life doesn't feel real, you know? I feel that. Like, how we met, right? And where we're at now. You met on TikTok. I reached out to you on TikTok. On TikTok? In 2020, what, two? One or two. 2021 yeah. or two. Yeah. I remember I saw one of your, uh, when you were um, yeah, which in TikTok? your God's Rockstar era. Was I wearing the bandana? You was doing some goofy monkey stuff yeah, in the yeah, forest. That was, that was like, peace and love. <laughs> yeah. But it was different. And I was like, I like this kid's energy. So I reached out. Yeah. We got on a call like a week later. Mm -hmm. You gave me your testimony, which we'll talk about for sure. Yeah. Your testimony was wild, jumping off a cliff. And then um, I think you came up the sack at, for, like, I don't know what for though. I think we just linked up. We finally linked up. Yeah, because when we talked first, it was still snowing up in Arnold. And then my parents got me the car and I drove down. It took like two hours. And we met, I, I think I stayed the night the first, oh, what was it? I think you did stay the night. Yeah, I stayed the so, night. Yeah, this is the first time we linked up. Yep. And then That's we, the did we take those pictures the first day or no? I don't know. Oh, well, we made music. We recorded. We definitely recorded. Yeah, though. we recorded. Which was fun. Yep. And then <clears throat> I think uh, we met up again for that Miles Minute concert. We did. With Zach. Yeah. Had the noodles. That was uh, New Year's. That was New Year's. That was, that was the Year's. second time we met up, I think. That was, yeah. That's crazy. Yep. I forgot about that. Yep. And then after that. You know a relationship's real when you link up through the internet, but it, it sticks? Yeah, bro. There's something like very like special about those types of relationships. It's rare, bro. Because on the internet, a lot of people are fake, but we like immediately clicked. There was something there, man. Like immediately. Like, immediately. Yeah. And then we took those pictures with Siv when, I, when you gave me uh, Cameron's butterfly fit. Oh, yeah. yeah. We shot, oh, yeah, we shot at Doko. Mm -hmm. Okay, downtown Sack. <clears throat> shot at Doko. And then fast forward, we, uh, Went to rock and jump. With my future wife. With your future wife. And my future wife. Yep. That's crazy. Our future wife. Our future we went to rock and jump with our future wives. Didn't and, know it. And none of us knew it. <laughs> nope. That's where you hurt your hip? You hurt I your hurt, yeah. I base I, I sprained my hip. Back my hip. hip was a, like this aligned like this. That's right, yeah. It was horrible. But that's where if we didn't do that, then we would have never gotten the, the ice cream, the sorbet. Because we left there, we got ice cream, and you wanted the sorbet. And then we went back to the house, and yeah. then we watched uh, Donnie Darko, I think. <laughs> was that the night I we think watched? we watched Donnie Dude, I was not, <laughs> bro, I'm not going to lie. The first time we saw that, I was like, what is this movie? <laughs> but watch Donnie Darko. We watched and then Donnie Darko. I kept coming down. You kept coming down, and then slowly you stopped hanging out with me because you were hanging out more with your future wife. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But now you guys are married. You got a five month old a daughter. Five month old daughter. Yep. And you're about to go to the Navy. Three days, bro. 72 hours. In 72 hours, you will be gone from your dream life here in SAC. And you will be becoming a holy man, dying. That's exactly. In the Navy. That's what I was putting it as is I'm dying. I feel it. I feel like everything now that I know, and it feels good because there's some things, you know, I feel like I can be a better man, but like 23 and after I come out of these next few years, you know, I'm going to be a full grown man. Mm. I'm going to become a man through this whole experience. And, you know, I feel like my attitude towards it is like, Obviously, it's sacrificing, you know? I'm giving up a lot of my daughter's youth. It's a lot of sacrifice, bro. A lot of my free time, music, time with my wife. I'm family. proud of you for that, though. Not a lot of men can 
lay down their wants, especially like you being a musician and an artist and a creative and knowing that you're like, I wouldn't say called, but you have such a potent, tangible mantle mm -hmm. of a musician on you, mm -hmm. like very tangible. And the mm -hmm. fact that you're letting that go for a season mm -hmm. to take care of your wife and your kids and put them in a better position, it's very commendable, bro. Very commendable. You know, and like, people ask me like, did God tell you to do this and all that? And like, man, I, you know, like I worked at Whole Foods and I applied at corrections facility as a police officer and for the Navy all at the same time. I got shot down from the corrections, shot down from the police, and the Navy accepted me with all of my medical history and psychological history that is pretty much impossible otherwise. So I feel like I threw out, you know, I took a step out in faith and he opened that door. And, you know, obviously, you know what happened with uh, the deal with music and how this year has been changed by that and how I thought we thought that that was the the shift, but mm -hmm. but it wasn't. It's not the time. Unfortunately, yeah, not. The, but you know, like at times when I get upset about it, like I can come to terms that it's just not the time. But there will be a time, you mm -hmm. know. And I'm not afraid of waiting for it to be good and better. Mm -hmm. So tell me, like, how does it as a creative, you completely letting go of like really anything creative for probably like one to five years knowing that you have like a burning desire to make music like how are you navigating that like what does your mind look like on a day-to-day -day, knowing that you're not gonna be able to express yourself in a creative way like you have been the past couple of years I feel like for the most part I have found who I am in music within the last few years unlike before like being 17 to like 20 I didn't really know who I was but within the last three years like really defined who I am like I know who I am as an artist and I know that I can always it's like riding a bike like I know though I'll be gone I'm gonna come back and it'll all it'll all make sense and it'll all be back to how it was like I mean I don't see it as me not having the ability to uh, be creative at all but just like shifting to what type of creativity, you know, like I, I can still write, I can still produce, I can still even record depending on if I'm at sea or at home, but like, it's gonna make me slow down and refine mm -hmm. music because my recording process is like freestyle or throw something together. Like I can record songs in like two hours, an hour, but now I'll have like years of time to refine music and really write like what, dude, I can write so much in five years like have you thought about since you're going into the navy and the navy is very disciplined and regimented and boom, 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 boom. Yeah. like have you thought how that's going to blend into your creative process i feel like in the brain there's two hemispheres you know you have your creative side and then you have your logic and reasoning side so i feel like for the navy having that logic and reason side take over for a time will like discipline the areas of your life that keep up and guard your creative side. You know, like hmm. I see it as an opportunity to make sure that I can maintain, you know, like the whole point of serving country, right? Is like freedom isn't free. You gotta protect your freedom. You gotta be able to sacrifice. Like there are people trying to take away your freedoms, you know? Freedom, freedom takes price. And so with relating that to music is like the creativity is always trying to get ruled out by things of this world, you know, like your your focus is gone, you don't, you're not as consistent, mm -hmm. but strengthening my consistency and my focus and my discipline will just strengthen my creativity in the, in the long run, I hope and believe. So you think discipline and regimen coupled with, I would say like the term I learned recently, intentionally drifting, like letting the spirit to lead, you think it's actually gonna strengthen it yeah. more than just leaving it all to intentional drifting? I think that I think like I said like the discipline 
and how our brains work, the left and the right, when it's when it combines and there's that symbiotic relationship. Like I think that it'll just make my music one more mature, right? Because like I'll be able to see all angles of the industry that I mean I've experienced recently. Like growing up and being a kid, music is always like like a game or like trying to to be quick to making money or like mm. like this little universe, this little bubble that you're trapped in of this like niche or this world that you're this community that you're trying to make music in. But when I get that life experience to see the perspective as a whole, like being able to come back to music in a more mature and so many wider perspectives, real life application. Like I've been out in the real world. I've traveled to countries. I've traveled and been through so many different circumstances and situations. The emotions that I will feel being away from my family and my child, the emotions I'll feel are going to be real, you know, and being able to transform all of that into new music is going to be, I think, beautiful. Mm. I think, I hope. I hope so too, man. Yeah. It's going to be uh, tough for me not being able to hear new, new Simply Ollie music on like a month-to-month -month basis. Yeah. But I got all the unreleased stuff, so. Yeah, I'll send more before I'm gone. But, you know, I think that, like I said, the break is not, one, it's not forever, but two, it's not like I'm losing anything. I'm going to come back greater than ever greater than ever, like stapled and being able to curate timelessness that not only is just going to cater to like Christians, but like it's going to become music for all that's glorifying God. Mm. And the Lord has shown me the way to do it and how to do it. And what is that way? Or is it like a, a secret way between you and him? No, it shouldn't be secret because if God's yeah. telling you how to do something, it should be for all of us. I think that the way that you impact everybody is one, being genuine, you know, being yourself, being vulnerable. able to be vulnerable. And two is I love poetry and being able to be poetic and being able to speak in parables and in psalms and in poetic manners and writing and and diff using using English and learning English and literature in a way to where you're making music and making art rather mm -hmm. than just, you know, there's methods to, to how you do it. You can go direct and I have a story to tell. I have emotions to tell. This is how I do it. You need to fit into my head or I need you to see this clearly. But with a lot of music that I've dived into and learned to love is it's more ambiguous and it is a feeling. And how you feel sometimes doesn't translate perfectly into black and white words. So being able to be creative with your music in unorthodox ways is perfectly fine. That people will eventually recognize as genuine, you mm -hmm. know. Instead of me trying to sound like or cater to this sound or this person, like that's obviously it's getting old, you know. And it's how not. do you how do you feel? A creative can be more vulnerable and genuine in their art, specifically creatives that are Christian, that follow the Lord, that have the Holy Spirit, that have access to, you know, create the creator himself. Mm -hmm. How do you feel like, because <clears throat> sometimes I struggle with like that vulnerability mm -hmm. and that genu genuineness to my, to my work and to my art. I was just talking to someone the other day and it's like when I write these stories for films mm. they're good stories but I'm noticing that a lot of them aren't personal to me mm -hmm. like they aren't directly pulling from my mm -hmm. life my experiences they're more so like verses and situations that I know people struggle with mm -hmm. and, and then putting into a story which is good mm -hmm. but I've always known and noticed that like the most powerful art that really changes people's hearts and moves and, and the paradigm shifts the paradigm is art that comes from your own vulnerable places mm -hmm. and being honest with yourself in various seasons whether it's traumatic seasons um, sorrowful seasons depressed seasons joyful seasons it's they're pulling from that honest place mm -hmm. so that's a struggle that i have is really having a lot of my art 
and not to say like I don't want it to focus on me, mm -hmm. but it's like, like for example, if I make something that comes from a sorrowful, depressed place, and I'm just honest with myself in that moment, when I get out of it, mm -hmm. and I'm able to look back, I could glorify God and be like, thank you, Lord, for taking me out of that. Yeah. And yeah. that, that could have been used to help minister to someone yeah. in that season. But it's like, that's my struggle. So mm -hmm. It's like, how do you feel like getting out, getting into more of a vulnerable place in creating things? Like, how do you get there? I guess for myself, right? Like how I've, it's a mindset, right? Like how you enter creativity, how you enter that creative space to sit down at your desk or sit down <clears throat> and storyboard or when you begin you have to have the perspective and the perspective that that i fit and that i feel like has just been ingrained into my personality is like i love ecclesiastes bro i love the book i love the realism and the rawness the because raw. i feel like i'm always looking for a true version of reality right and always trying to see from the perspective of god and how that seems to a man is like it will never happen fully, but I think God sees everything. It says in the word that, you know, day and night are the same to him. Dark and light are the same to God. So my perspective is very much like Ecclesiastes, like we all die. Mm -hmm. We're all going to die one day. So what is holding me back from being vulnerable most times is your shame, your mm -hmm. fear, you're, you're like not knowing what's going to happen or just like nervousness, anxiety, paranoid. And putting all that aside and being like, I'm going to die anyway. So what's the worst that can happen of this? Like no one's going to come to your house and kill you for speaking how you really feel, you know? And so the only person holding you back is yourself. And so I've come to just realize like it's a leap of faith to say how you feel and it takes courage and boldness to say how you feel and what it what it what it is and to me that comes easy because you you kind of translate that emotions that you sometimes have like oh i don't like out of anger right mm -hmm. where you feel bold out of anger to do anything and do crime and, and punch people in the face like you have an, an, an impulsiveness just be impulsive to be vulnerable, you know, like be impulsive to be vulnerable, which mm. which for my case, when I make music like you could do that privately. But obviously there's some things you might record or some things you might write that coming back with fresh eyes or fresh ears. You're like, OK, maybe I shouldn't do that. Mm -hmm. But initially, you know, just do it, let it out, you know, and it doesn't hurt. Now, when it comes to releasing, you're going to have to explain it, you know, and. That's do you what, have to explain art, though. Not all the time. Not all the time. I hate if it's to if it's super it. hot takes or like if you're purposefully trying to. I mean, you're gonna have to explain it to God. You know? <laughs> yeah. Like, why are you out here trying to just openly diss people or whatever? But like, nah, about your emotions or how you feel, you don't have to explain. Like, so they're parables for a reason. Exactly. It's. I mean, you can make art for people to fit into, or you that fits into people. I forget. Hmm. I think it's called, um, it's called, uh, not Plato. What are the, what are the names of like some philo philosophers? Uh, Aristotle. No, I think it's like Socrates. Socratic, Socratic literature or writing, something like that. Socrates? It's Socrates, yeah. Socrates, yeah. Socrates. I think it's something like what you say people can interpret for themselves what I say people can interpret. Can you say what you said? You said you either make people, you either make art for people to fit in or mm -hmm. you make art for, you either make art that people fit in or you make art that, f that, that blends to people. So your demographic is either okay. everyone or you're targeting a simple person. Like you can either like, like target audience, you know, people are always trying to, oh, I want everybody to like this. So how do you make everybody like it? Well, mm -hmm. you make it as baseline as possible. Or you force people to see how you feel, but I like leaving stuff up for interpretation. I like you know? I like that too. I feel like that's what the Bible is. Because it, it forces the listener or the viewer to think. 
to think and to search out the depth for themselves. Exactly. And that's what, and like, that's, that's what, what Christ came to do. That's why he gave the parables. Mm -hmm. He told the, he told the apostles, like, mm -hmm. I speak to you clearly and mm -hmm. plainly because for them, it's not made known the secrets exactly. of the kingdom of heaven. Exactly. God wants people that diligently seek him. And, and our art should be made to have people diligently seek out. Exactly. You know, exactly. the intention of our art and the exactly. where the source is. And, and, mm -hmm. yeah. and that, that builds a barrier for yourself, too, because mm -hmm. I want people who listen to me to not just be a fan. Well, I don't want to just be on a pedestal. People who listen to me listen to me because they seek out what I have to say. Mm -hmm. And that shows and that builds a relationship. That's not just, I'm greater than you, but like, you feel me, you get me, you see me, and I see you, and I get you, and I feel you, and that is love, mm. you know? Like, you're not better than or worse than you're equal to. And that's where you create a different form of relationship, and that's where you give the glory to God. It's not, I'm better than you, I'm probably as worse as you, so let's both see the resolve, you know? and. That's how I've learned to, to write and where I'm going into. Mm. I don't know what's going to happen in the next five years, but. No one knows. No. The state of the world. <laughs> That's what, yeah. Like you can be called to freaking war in Ukraine. Or, and God forbid. Music is not in your mind at all. <laughs> no, right. And that's another thing, too, is like, I'm giving it up because it's not my idol. Mm. It's not my idol. It's a test to see if it really is like, are you putting your identity in it or not? It's what I love, but I can live. It can't be who we are. Exactly. I can live without it. And, and you know, in the future, like, I want, I care about how people see me to an extent. Because we're all supposed to be representatives of Christ, right? I should care about that. I should care about how I represent him. The, the aroma that you're walking around in. Yeah. Okay. And... When I tell this story of my life in 10 years and when I'm making music for whoever has to hear it, like I want to say like, this is where I was, this is what I did, and this is where I'm at. I jumped off this cliff, almost died, went through the worst mental health trauma in my life. I got up, I got a wife, got married, had a baby. I provided, I joined the military. I put away my myself, put aside what I love. And in the end, I glorify God and I make music and I have the example that this is where I did transparently and in the future be like, only God can do that. Only God saved me from that cliff. Only God got me into the military and only God is going to expose my music. And I can't take credit. You know? she